Hello, welcome to a shorter than usual Granada Reports because of the football. A new report says the COVID tier system, which led to parts of the North West being under the strictest lockdown rules, was confusing and not good enough to stop infections. The government's handling of the pandemic was described as the worst public health failure ever, with serious errors and delays that cost lives. Our political correspondent Leisha McNally reports. Jamie Mawson doesn't need a report to tell him we locked down too late. He's felt it since his father died with coronavirus after a football match he says should never have been allowed to happen. I hold this government 100% for my father's death. 100%. A lot of the public have forgotten. A lot of the public have only realised about the rollout of the vaccine. Well, that doesn't hide the fact of their failing from the beginning, how they failed to protect not just my father, we speak about the care home scandal, we speak about the PPE scandal, we speak about many, many subjects. They should have acted straight away and there would have been thousands and thousands of people still alive today. Now, a cross-party group of MPs have agreed with him. In a damning report which found that ministers were too slow to recognise the danger and too late to lock the country down. While there is an increased likelihood that cases may arise in this country, we are well prepared and well equipped to deal with them. But we were not well prepared or well equipped. Thousands of care home deaths would follow as people were sent from hospital without being tested first. The reports branded that a failure and found that while the UK was not alone in suffering significant loss of life, the tragic scale was among the worst in Europe and could have been mitigated. And while people in the northwest lived under lockdowns longer than anywhere else, we lost 20,000 people. The regional tier system deemed confusing and not anywhere near watertight enough to prevent infections from spreading. We knew tier three um, uh, would cause certain damage to our economy, but without necessarily uh, having the health impact uh, that was being claimed. In fact, in this lengthy report, it's only the few pages dedicated to the vaccine rollout which aren't packed with criticism. It's praised as an extraordinary success that saved 112,000 lives. Elsewhere, though, the government admits there are lessons to be learnt. And we've committed to an inquiry to ensure that the right lessons are learnt from the pandemic. But at the same time, we acted throughout on the basis of the scientific advice. Outside Parliament, a colourful memorial remembers all those we've lost. The hope is that failures laid out in black and white could help prevent future names being added to this wall. Leisha McNally, ITV News. A man who died after the Manchester Arena bombing would have had a high chance of survival if he'd received quicker medical care. 28-year-old John Atkinson from Bury suffered catastrophic blood loss and wasn't taken to hospital for nearly an hour and a half. Medical experts told the inquiry by then he'd lost too much blood. They said he still might have been saved if he'd been treated within the first 40 minutes. The new Chief Minister of the Isle of Man is Alfred Cannon, who's been Treasury Minister for the last five years. Mr Cannon, a father of three, was backed by 14 of the 24 members of the House of Keys to take the top job. Tributes are being paid to the Preston North End owner and racing tycoon Trevor Hemmings, who's died at the age of 86. He lived in Lancashire for most of his life and made his name in horse racing by winning the Grand National three times. It's 11 years since he rescued Preston when they were served with a winding up order, as David Chisnell reports. Ted Hunter is a winning favourite of the National! There's nothing better. It's the ultimate. Jason Maguire and Bala Briggs win the national for Trevor Hemmings. For Trevor Hemmings, winning the Grand National was like winning the World Cup. The billionaire businessman from Lancashire enjoyed success in the world's greatest steeplechase on three occasions with three different horses. In the colours of Trevor Hemmings, it's many clouds who wins the Krabby's Grand National. My whole life has been about trying to be successful. And you, when you go into it, you go in to win. I mean, I got a horse because the doctor said to me, get yourself a hobby. But it became a business. You've got to say, I'm here for a reason. I'm not a passenger, I'm going to be the driver. <laughs> 
Well, since 2010, Hemmings has also been the driver of Preston North End after stepping in to save the football club from going into administration. The high point of his time in charge came in 2015 when the team won promotion back to the championship. We'll make it possible. Sometimes it's almost impossible. It's been a marvellous year. Here we are enjoying it as we should because it was bloody marvellous. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> as a proud Lancastrian, Hemmings moved north from London as a boy. He amassed his wealth through property and over the years owned Blackpool Tower and the Pontins holiday camps. As a friend to the Royals, Zara Phillips rode his horse as she won an Olympic silver in London in 2012. Famous for always wearing his cap, he was made a commander of the Royal Victorian Order for his charity work in 2011 and charity played a big role in his life. One of his final public appearances came two weeks ago at the Rebecca House Children's Hospice in his adopted home of the Isle of Man, where he helped to open a new playground that he part-funded. Last night, Trevor Hemmings died at the age of 86, with confirmation coming from his beloved Preston North End. For those who knew him, it's a sad day. Tremendous person. I remember him flying in actually just to meet me, just to try and seal the deal and convince me to, to sign for Preston, obviously dropping down the league, but I think he was, uh, he was the one that really convinced me that Preston was the right club for me and I wanted to finish my career there because of him, really. It was just a pleasure to be around, really. Just a really, really top bloke. Among the many tributes, former Grand National winning jockey AP McCoy has paid his own on social media, saying it's desperately sad news. Trevor Hemmings was a private man whose public success in life means he'll long be remembered after his death. David Chisnell, ITV News. Yeah, what a great character. Well, to Speedway and in the Premiership Grand Final, well done to Manchester's Bellevue Aces. They have the advantage after the first leg against the Peterborough Panthers, but only a slim lead as it was 46 points to 44. The second leg is in Peterborough on Thursday. Well, now a complete change of mood as we hear about the poignant act of kindness by staff at a hospice in Chester. Before she died, Jan Holman wanted to see her beloved horse Bob and her two spaniels, Monty and Roly, one last time. So staff at the Hospice of the Good Shepherd made that final wish come true. They reunited them all at her bedside before Jan died just yesterday. Her husband Dennis told me just how much that had meant to them. It was absolutely astonishing. Um, Jan had become... De depressed would be the wrong word, but she was very down that she hadn't been able to see them for over four weeks. Um, she'd been in hospital before she went into the hospice, and the hospital, quite rightly, wouldn't allow uh, any animals whatsoever in. And for three of the four weeks she was there, they wouldn't even allow me in. So she was feeling very, very lonely. And to see Jan seeing those animals for the first time in four or five weeks, it was astonishing. She, she changed totally. Uh, she really did. What way? Uh, just a big smile. Um, uh, uh, her animals are so important to Jan. Um, they, they always have been. Um, we always used to joke at home that uh, priorities were very much dogs first, the horse second, and I came in a very low third. Um, she, she loves the dog, she loved her horse, she would always come down to the stables and spend lots of time brushing him, riding him, and just being with him. Um, all, all the animals have got such personalities, and they're not animals to Jan, they were part of the family, and it was, it was seeing family members. We can see Bob behind you there. Um, do you think yeah. they were aware <laughs> at all of how important that was to her? They reacted very strongly when they saw Jan, um, both the dogs and Bob. Um, they, they were just so pleased to see Jan because the, the, they had a really good, re well, they have a really good relationship with Jan. Um, she looks after them and to a large extent they look after her as well. So um, it, it was, it's a very close family relationship. And now, of course, they, they are missing Jan. Um, and that's something I have to try and develop so that they, they see me now as their, as their mum, as well as their dad. I was going to say, what was all of this like for you? Because that chance to say goodbye for Jan must have been wonderful, but terribly sad at the same time. It, it was, but I, I was able to hold her hand as she took her last breath, uh, and that was very moving. But what I felt at that time was an, over, an overwhelming sense of relief 
because certainly the last few days, it was obvious that Jan was suffering. Um, she was finding it very difficult. Um, and um, w when she was at peace, uh, it, it put me much at peace as well. And it, it was... Uh, it's only a day, just over a day now, since we, we did lose Jan. But I, I feel very comfortable um, knowing that she has gone on to somewhere peaceful. And uh, let's hope we meet again one day. And do you think it helped her find peace? I mean, people who don't have animals sometimes don't understand this special bond. But that chance to say her goodbyes, do you think that that, that helped her? Oh, enormously so. Um, one of the issues that she had was when she was taken into the hospital, and this was seven weeks ago, um, we thought she was just going in for a check. Um, she'd been unwell the previous week, we'd rung the hotline, and the hotline said, yeah, we think you ought to come in, um, pop up to Liverpool and we'll have a look at you. Um, she didn't get a chance to say goodbye to the animals because she was going to be back by lunchtime. And uh, after I'd waited outside, they, they phoned me and said, we're going to keep Jan in overnight for a few tests. And overnight turned into a few days, and a few days turned into four weeks. So she was away from them, not having actually said goodbye to them. And she found that very, very hard. I can imagine. And, and you had 46 years together. What was Jan like? We had a lovely relationship. Um, Jan was very intelligent. Um, she had lots and lots of interests. Uh, great fun to be with um, in every sense. Um, she, she was a lovely person, very genuinely. She certainly sounds like she was, uh, Dennis. Now, the hospice will always have a special place in your heart, I'm sure. Uh, they are finding it very tough to raise funds at the moment, though. COVID over the last two years really has put back charities generally a long way, but it really has hit the hospice hard. It's a very local charity, and they really do need the support of a lot of local people to, to keep it running the way they want to run it. Dennis, I'm so sorry for your loss, but thank you so much for talking to us and, and raising that important issue with us it's tonight. And of course, very well done to everyone at the Hospice of the Good Shepherd in Chester. Now the weather with Emma. It's chucking it down. Might as well get on with them jobs, Gary. Wipes in the bin, though. Oh, good lad. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Hello there, very good evening to you. Even when it's cloudy, your weather photos put a smile on our faces, so do keep them coming. They really cheer us up here in the office, although it was quite miserable out there today for many of us. And looks like it's going to stay quite cloudy for the next few days as well, but mostly dry. That's because high pressure is generally in charge, but it's just a little bit too far to the southwest to keep us completely dry. You've got fronts milling around the top of it as it gradually pulls away. And so one or two bits and pieces of light rain and drizzle slipping through the net. Let's rewind to the next few hours. Uh, still a few showers around, but largely dry into this overnight period. Very cloudy as well, a really thick layer of cloud descending. Also lots of mist and fog over the Pennines. Temperatures similar to last night's values, always a little bit cooler out in the countryside. Very sunrise and sunset times for tomorrow. Sun's up at 7.34. And tomorrow is going to be a better day than today. It will be quite grey first thing, with one or two showers around as well. They'll only be light. They could be quite frequent initially, but things will dry up for the afternoon. This low cloud and the mist will break gradually but break it will so some good sunny spells by the afternoon but turning cloudier and breezier on Thursday and brighter and cooler on Friday bye bye United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada weather he's doing us now Stop, fella thanks Emma I hope you'll be pleased to know we're back with a longer program tomorrow for now bye bye <laughs>